Greetings from Tales from SYO Ranch, news and commentary from the heartland. And I'm your host, Bill Stone. And today we're going to talk about Red Cortez Strikes Back. So, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Oh, sorry, wrong card. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, hereafter referred to simply as Red Cortez because it works, is the gift that just keeps on giving in terms of being a prime example of how communism itself has slipped into our federal government in the United States. She's also a great example of complete stupidity, self-professed power madness, sociopathy, and narcissism, and in fact becoming an ongoing meme. In fact, she's such an ongoing meme that I have donated the two meme templates to the public, and you can find them at my website at www.wrstone.com. They're right on the main page there. One of them has a simple black background, and the other one is a red background with the Soviet hammer and a sickle, because it's true. Both of them are widescreen in 4K and include my slight alterations to make her look a little bit cross-eyed. Red Cortez's most recent stupidity comes from the House Finance Committee's investigation into Wells Fargo's extremely shady business practices, in which she asks some questions, to which I will provide some sane answers, which would have been nice to actually hear come out of the guy's mouth that they were grilling. Now understand that I do believe that Wells Fargo has much to answer for in their very shady business practices, but I'm not going to go into that here. Because the thing is, Red Cortez's questions have absolutely nothing to do with any of this. Now, I'll give you some questions, and again, I'm going to try to provide some sane answers that did not show up on her. They should have said. <clears throat> uh, Mr. Sloan, earlier today, you said that Wells Fargo does not put profits over people, correct? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's what I said. Uh, I'm interested in the human rights abuses and environmental uh, disasters that some say were financed by your bank, Wells Fargo. Uh, I don't think we actually financed any disasters. Uh, we financed some companies that maybe had things go wrong, but we didn't find any disasters. Uh, in a recent Guardian article by Crystal Tubles and uh, Matt Rimley, they stated that Wells Fargo has pursued profits without principle by investigating in prisons for profit, immigration detention centers, uh, loan sharking, payday, payday lending, and uh, holding much of the bond of debt, strangling Puerto Rico's effect, efforts to lift itself out of a financial crisis. Is it true that Wells Fargo has invested in finances or some of these industries? Um, yes, it's what we do. It's what banks do. We invest in lots of things in order to try to bring a return on our investment so that we can make money. Uh, Mr. Sloan, uh, why was the bank investing in caging children and financing the caging of children to begin with? What the hell are you talking about? Uh, oh, so in finance, you are financing involvement that financing coursing in Geo Group, correct? <laughs> uh, yes, we were one of many banks who invested in that. Uh, so these uh, private run uh, de de private detention facilities, which uh, is involved in caging children, but I'll, I'll, I'll move on. <laughs> uh, Mr. Sloan, uh, Wells Fargo was also an investor, the major investor, in the Dakota Access Pipeline and the Keystone XL Pipeline. Uh, they were prime investors and lenders to companies building these pipelines in defiance of Standing Rock Sioux's treaty rights uh, to protect its water and sacred land. Uh, they warned early on, the Dakota, Lakota Sioux warned, that the pipeline was unstable and bound to leak. And despite that, it was built anyway, and it has leaked like uh, five times. And the Keystone XL in particular has one leak that leaked uh, 210,000 gallons across South Dakota. 
Okay, wait a second. I got to interrupt your stupid thing here because I was born in South Dakota. I love that state. I honestly do. Most people who are politicians say, you know, they love their state, but it's usually just mouthing words. I really do love South Dakota. I consider myself a South Dakotan living abroad in Nebraska at present. And um, when she talks about 210,000 gallons being spilled across South Dakota, that's not accurate. Yes, there was 200,000 gallons to, uh, spilled, but the pipeline is a long stretch that runs, you know, basically north-south um, near the uh, eastern border to the state. The state itself is like it takes me... It, it, the, the, uh, speed limit on the Interstate 90 there is 80 miles an hour. It still takes me several hours, you know, five or so hours to drive from one end of that state to the other. It's a big state. It didn't spill all over, it's all across South Dakota. It spilled in a very specific area on the eastern side uh, that, you know, it was maybe a few miles. I mean, it didn't spill all across South Dakota. So getting back to her ranting here. <clears throat> Uh, since it's Wells Fargo uh, financed the building in an environmentally unstable way, uh, shouldn't the bank be held responsible for financing the cleanup of the disasters from these projects? Uh, no, Congressman. See, that's not how it works. We finance stuff. And if the company we finance screws up, that may screw up our bottom line. But it's not our fault if they screw up. That's, that's just how the world works, you know. Think of it this way. I mean, you're sitting there asking stupid questions. Uh, you are a brainless twit. Do we say, you're sitting in a chair, so do we blame the chair manufacturer for you having a seat to sit in and make stupid, stupid questions? Um, you know, I, it doesn't work like that. It's just how, not how the world works. Uh, so let's focus on the Dakota Access Pipeline. Uh, should Wells Fargo be held responsible for the damages caused by occurring uh, and by climate change uh, due to the fossil fuels in these projects? <laughs> no. Uh, say from uh, or when we have to reinvest in infrastructure, building seawalls from the uh, uh, erosion of cleanups, wildfires, etc. Um, is this actually happening someplace, Congresswoman? I mean, I hear people bitch about it, but I've never seen it actually occurring. Uh, in any case, again, Wells Fargo, we invest in a lot of stuff. Uh, if we can invest in a company that screws up, it may very well impact our bottom line, but we do our best to figure out what's going to be good. Uh, how about um, the cleanups of the leaks from the Dakota Access Pipeline? No, uh, again, you don't hold accountable us. You hold accountable the company that screwed that up. You know, again, it's like you sitting there making really stupid questions that have nothing to do with anything except weird environmentalist ideas that you have. And you're reading off of a piece of paper. Do we blame the paper company for your being stupid? No, we, we, it's two different things. Uh, so, uh, hypothetically, if the, the, there was a leak from the Dakota Access Pipeline, uh, why shouldn't Wells Fargo pay to clean it up since it paid for the construction of the pipeline? <laughs> um, because that's not how the world works. Again, you're an incredibly stupid human being. You're sitting here asking incredibly stupid questions that are frankly beneath the dignity of both myself and the House of Representatives. Do we blame you know, say, you're, you have an apartment. Do we blame the people who built that building and the landlords of that for your being here and being stupid? No, we, you're to blame for being stupid. Uh, so, one question. Why did Wells Fargo finance this pipeline when it was widely seen to be environmentally unstable? <laughs> um, well, at the time... You know, we had some studies that said it wasn't that going to be environmentally unstable. And again, if you want to blame somebody, you blame the people who built the thing. It's not our fault. Us and like 18, 19 other banks invested in this thing. You don't come after us for the investment. You go after the people who screwed up.
you know we'd like to see them gone after too because they're hurting our bottom line okay so that's the idiocy that she engaged herself in um, in the House of Representatives and the Finance Committee. And there are only some examples of the complete stupidity of this woman. Uh, you can see I've got running in my lower third some of her quotes. And she is rightly the butt of every joke that is made about her. <laughs> I will give her some credit. She does know some big words. And she is able to spout this ludicrous climate change nonsense pretty much on the fly. Um, she wasn't always watching her paper. She was sometimes just spitting it out of her mouth. She's got brains enough to do that. But to ask such stupid questions that have nothing to do with Wells Fargo's business practices, very shady business practices, introduces a level of stupidity that we have never seen in the U.S. Congress. I am reminded here in Nebraska of a state legislator, Ernie Chambers, who represents one of the districts in um, Omaha, Nebraska, a city of about a million people. And at one point, a number of years ago, he was called by one of the local press outlets a mediocre representative. His response was, he said, mediocre people need representation too. Yeah. These are the stupid, power-mad, sociopathic narcissists who now control every aspect of your life, whether you know it or not. And in Red Cortez's case, one can only blame New York's 14th Congressional District, who, rather than vote for the lesser of two evils in a Republican, or better yet, voted for some third party who wasn't either of these power-mad, sociopathic narcissists, they voted for a complete moron. So, citizens of New York's 14th Congressional District, you are responsible for Red Cortez. Yes, this is absolutely reinforcing a prejudice common among Americans who do not live in major metropolitan areas or New York City. That all you New Yorkers are extremely provincial idiots, drunk on what they believe is their power to control the entire country. It is now time for you in the 14th District in New York to do a recall vote for Red Cortez and find someone who can represent you that actually has a brain and will ask questions relevant to Wells Fargo's shady business practices rather than stupid questions about environmentalism that if you kept asking questions like that and not the relevant ones, it would result in Wells Fargo getting off the hook. If you do not, at this moment, start a recall vote, then you are, in fact, morons yourselves. And the rest of the country is totally correct to believe that New Yorkers are extremely provincial idiots, drunk on what they believe is their power to control the entire country. So, that is all that I have to say about that matter for today. So, thank you for watching. And if you like what I'm doing, please like, sub, hit the notification bell, and tell all of your friends, as family, and neighbors, and pets, and livestock to do the same. I'd appreciate your support via Subscribestar and PayPal, which is uh, both linked to, and also a page on my website where you can support me further if you want to. So, that is it for Tales from SYL Ranch for today. Thank you for watching very much, and remember, for a breath of fresh air, watch Tales from SYL Ranch, news and commentary from the heartland. And I'm your host, Bill Stone. Ultimate power in this world has always been one simple thing, the control and manipulation of minds.